Greg Mahalik, and we're at the State of 2006 conference. And I guess I should start out by getting a little bit about your background. Uh, background is I went to uh, Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University for um, seven and a half years, five years undergraduate and two and a half years graduate. Five years undergraduate standard for aerospace engineering, uh, specializing in my graduate area in propulsion, mainly jet engines, gas turbines, aircraft propulsion. Uh, but during that time I started getting interested in um, uh, advanced propulsion, especially on the space aspect. And uh, when I got my first job at General Electric Aircraft Engines back in 1995, I moved to Ohio, did some uh, advanced concept work for them, as well as just standard performance analysis for large commercial turbine engines like what you see on airliners. And um, <clears throat> one of the funner parts of that job was getting both well, pulse detonation engines. Oh, yeah. So I have a, a pretty strong background in pulse detonation. I kind of helped Genie get their program off the ground. Um, I was uh, fortunate enough to get four patents in that technology. Oh, okay. Uh, based on new valve designs, and, uh, MHD, and, you know, bringing MHD into that technology. So that, that sets up kind of your background then. You're already getting involved with patents, breakthrough technologies, and yeah. you can kind of <laughs> stuff that might be considered fringe in aerospace, even though they're, they're definitely conventional. I That's guess. right. That's right. And so um, it was a great company to work for. I was afforded a lot of opportunities. However, my main passion was starting to become faster than my travel and starting to figure out if there's a way to do that. And uh, back in 1998, I did some research and I wrote a paper for one of the AIAA Joint Propulsion Conferences that year with a, a, that set the framework for kind of my model for space time and faster than light travel now. Oh, okay. And that sort of blossomed into doing more research and learning more about physics and just kind of what the scientific community has going on right now. And so uh, just kind of kept up with that, but on an independent nature, I've never been paid to do that. Yeah. Um, after 19, after about 2001, I decided to switch industries. I didn't like living in Ohio and I came to Southern California. And uh, <clears throat> where we don't really have four seasons, it's just sunny and 72 all day. Um, but I'm here close to Hollywood in California, which is where they make all the sci-fi stuff. Yeah, that's so right. <laughs> resonant cultural theme or something. Sure, uh, but I wanted to get into the space industry, and that's what that's what led me out there. And oh, so now okay. I work for the Aerospace Corporation, which is a federally funded research and development center for the government, uh, specializing in launch support and new technologies for the Department of Defense for like new satellites, remote sensing, um, electro optics, but I particularly do launch support for the EELV, Atlas V and Delta IV vehicles. I do upper stage cryogenic engine performance analysis and hardware reviews and that sort of thing. It's a very, very technical, very rigorous <laughs> mathematics based stuff. Right? No, hardly any math is involved at all. It's oh, very, oh, hardware based. <clears throat> very hardware based. Very hardware based. You know, if there's a problem with a valve at a vendor, how is that going to affect the fleet? How is that going to affect the performance of the engines? That sort of thing. Oh, hand, hands on. Hands on. Yeah, a lot of some some decent hands on. But also, this corporation is is uh, is uh, not necessarily the corporate environment like what I came from with General Electric, which is why I'm working there. And so, um, uh, it affords me the opportunity to do independent research, not to get paid for it, but they sponsor me to come to conferences like this, knowing very well that I have an interest in everything except what I do for work here. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's uh, really nice that they do that. Sure. And, and sure. they see that I've, you know, uh, made a name for myself in the industry. As, well, how, how do you field. see this technology progressing? <clears throat> I mean, you know, have, I mean, I, I've been absolutely stunned, you know, having, having followed the papers and, and, you know, I'm pretty prolific with the interviews and stuff, seeing the evolution over, over the past several years into this conference is, is mind-blowing. Yeah, it really is, and it's good to see that even, I mean, I've been coming to the conference for a couple of years, but not as long as some people, obviously, but even over that time, to see people that have presented papers on their ideas and their theories, and then the next year see, okay, well, here's an experiment that we devised to go test this, and then the next year see, okay, well, we put the experiment together, we ran into some snags, we're ready to run, and then the next year going, here's our results. And it's really just neat to see that evolution. And given the smallness of the advanced space propulsion or breakthrough propulsion, New Frontiers community, whatever you call it, it's uh, really good to see that there's some, some fantastic information coming out of that. So, Sorry. That's all right. Well, yeah, so in terms of the direction that you're going with FTL propulsion, um, is, there, is there kind of a, a vision that you're pursuing? Is there something that you kind of keep in focus when you're designing and doing, doing your work? Yeah. Um, what I, the ideas that I've had started out as being a way to go faster than light. There's got to be a way, you know, and there's, you know, there's nothing that says you can't do it. You know, it's just all mathematically and the ways to interpret results. Well, 
that was kind of like putting the cart before the horse in that once I, just, once I found out or came up with a method of maybe how to do it, it started to, okay, well, what are the, what's the framework for laying that method down and getting more detailed into that? And what it ended up being was uh, a brand new model, a novel, well, the paper I had written was called A Novel View of Space-Time, Permitting mm -hmm. Faster Than Light Travel, and that's exactly what it has turned out to be. So um, the space-time that I envision in my model, or in, in, in my mind, is very visual. I mean, I, I'm not a very math-oriented person at all. Oh, yeah. <coughs> well, uh, you know, some of the, Einstein himself visualized it before he did yes, that. Yes, and, so. and I get the flack for that all the time when I submit reviews, from, when I submit my papers. They're like, oh, not enough math. My point is that the math has already been done. I'm just providing a different way of looking at the solution. Oh, so you're offering context to an existing idea. Yeah, exactly. So they say, well, you need to prove this or go mathematically show this or predict this. And I say, well, I don't have any qualms about what's already been done. I'm just showing you a different way of explaining what you can't mathematically explain right now. And so it ends up being a um, not only FTL propulsion or moving faster than light, but it ends up coming towards a, gra a unification theory of gravity, electric force, magnetism, and so forth, and mass, all in one gelling th theory of what space-time is and what matter is and that sort of thing. Oh, okay. So it's a fluidic-based model, which some people have tried before. Maybe they didn't have the same kind of visualization techniques that I'm trying to envision in my mind. But, you know, I could work with a graphic artist and come up with my models for these, these, uh, these ideas. Well, I, I'd like to switch briefly. <laughs> I'd like to switch briefly to your thoughts on some of the papers that we're seeing this year and, and where these concepts are leading us because we've seen, well, I, I think some derivations from relativity theory and then some extended work with the Alcubi air drive and, and one of the things that struck me, Eric Davis now is moving into brain theory work. I have never seen that in an applied context before. So do, do you think this, well, I guess first of all, does this kind of support that you're, with the work that you're doing? Yes, absolutely, and this is, this is something that also has been um, pretty good for me, is that um, what I try to do is when I see these kind of papers, I try to see any similarities, because of course I'm biased to my work, just like most people are, um, but nonetheless I'm very open to finding out what they're trying to present, and if they have other evidence scientifically or otherwise that may refute some ideas or predictions that I had made, and say, okay, well how can I get my theory to work with that and still not screw up anything else? Yeah. And in fact, what I saw from Eric Davis today, especially the paper he did with Sonny White, is that they have a very similar look, outlook on brain theory and so forth and bulk space time that I proposed, you know, I proposed actually back in 98. This is just, they're, they're doing it as a more mathematically refined model. Sure. Uh, the other gentleman, uh, Frank Felber, that presented uh, his work on uh, moving mass, creating repulsive force. Uh, and in 2001, I visually depicted that in my paper on in gravity and inertia. Oh, at the okay. Joint Propulsion Conference, and so Frank and I are going to start talking. Uh, but no, there's a tremendous amount of support for at least the model that I have on what coming out from some of the other you know, more renowned people in this field. Oh, absolutely, and, absolutely. And so that's really a comfort, you know, comforting for me. But I'm just, you know, I, I kind of wish I could get out there a little bit more. You know. Well, and again, what what specifically is your presentation about this year? I'm sorry. Oh, uh, what specifically is your presentation about this? Oh, year? I'm not presenting this year. Oh, I didn't realize. No, I'm just okay. I'm just chairing a session. I'm oh, actually okay. co-chairing with Dr. Jim Woodward. Uh, I'll be chairing that at the end of the day. Here. So the the chairing position really involves reviewing papers and looking it over, and then it looks like chairs also assist with the presentation. Actually... Sometimes, I mean, like in the session this morning, you know, I'm not a chair. I had no nothing to do with the session, but my laptop was happened to be available, and so I helped to just kind of put them together. Sure. Uh, but as far as reviewing the papers, yeah, session chairs are typically supposed to review papers, uh, review abstracts, have comments with the author, constructive criticism on how they should improve their paper to get it to be more what the community is looking for. Not so much you need to say this or this, but you know, help express their ideas, you know, both visually, mathematically, and in and, and, and text form, so that whenever they do their presentation, people aren't, you know, completely, oh, well, that's not really what I understood in your paper. Absolutely. And so I know it's, you know, it's, it's tough for people with a very technical background to sometimes communicate the ideas, depending on how yeah. they do. You know, yeah. some people are good at it, others need some work. But as far as being session chairs and, and part, of re, part of the review staff, that's kind of what you do. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. <coughs> Well, let me think. Oh, I, I guess I should probably wrap up with uh, contact info. Do you, do you have a website that people can visit? Or? Uh, unfortunately not, but I just have an email uh, that I can get email to. Oh, okay. I don't know if you'd be willing to give that out or not. Sure. It's uh, greg.v.maholic. Uh, greg with one G at each end. Uh, v, the middle initial, and then at arrow, A-E-R-O, dot org. 
arrow.org. Yeah, so greg.v.mahalik. Mahalik is M E H O L I C. O L I C. Okay. Yeah. At arrow.org. Yep. Awesome. Great. Well, thanks again. I really appreciate no it. No problem. Thank you. It's an honor. Hopefully, I'll, I'll have some more footage for you in a you know hour or cup two. You know, whenever we have time. Oh, absolutely. I love that. Thank you.